in the midst of this pandemic with the migrant, uh, there's a large group. And let me just go back and say there's a large organization, for example, here in Florida that I'm, I'm a little more familiar with. And it, uh, it's the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, for example. Now, what they do is they, they make sure that these migrant workers are safe. They have pushed for the Fair Food Act. They have, you know, uh, making sure that big, large uh, grocery stores and chains don't take advantage of the farmer, thereby trickle down and take advantage of the migrant worker, you know, to, to, uh, to take care of the, of the migrant worker in our food supply chain. So the Coalition of Immokalee Workers would probably be best to say what it is that they specific, the specifics, but overarching, it's take care of these migrant workers, especially under COVID, is make sure that those uh, migrant workers get tested and not have to wait, you know, five to 14 days for a test result. These are people mm. who are touching our food, if we want to even look at it just plain old that way. Somebody is sick and touching your food, I don't think I want to serve it to my family. Likewise, I want to take care of those families because that's backbreaking work. So you want to go ahead and take care of the migrant workers, provide for, for the uh, some type of uh, personal protective equipment for the migrant workers. You want to go ahead and make sure that, like I said, they get tested. You want to make sure that if they do get sick, that they have a place to go to recuperate and to hopefully survive th this, this horrible, horrible disease. That's what Governor DeSantis should be focusing on, um, not relying on the National Guard to go and do this or Doctors Without Borders for crying out loud coming to the United States to provide for the migrant workers in our country. That's something that the governor should be taking care of. 